Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I'm Tom. Oh, it's our history unit, which I always enjoy. That food, travel, those are my favorites. This is the story behind Christmas candy canes. How did they come to be? Where did they start? Where did they get their start from? Where do the where do its origins lie? As our writer wrote here, actually, I. I had kind of connected it with a church, but I wasn't sure how that connection came to be and、uh, what the story was completely behind this. So we're going to look at this. I tend to like candy canes because I don't know at Christmas peppermint. That flavor of peppermint. Just brings back wonderful memories. It is you know? nice indeed.、Yeah. And、uh, candy canes, of course, are shaped like canes.、Mm. Uh, cane, of course, a cane is something that helps people walk、uh, if they're old. And even if it doesn't have that shape, if it's just held in one hand, it's still、mm. called a cane. Whereas if you have a broken foot or a broken leg and the pole is going underneath your arms, that's a crutch.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's an important difference. And if you have two, they're crutches. Exactly. And most people will use two crutches if. They have a broken leg or something like that, but we're talking about candy canes in today's lesson, and the reason we're talking about them is because Christmas is just around the、mm-hmm. corner.、Yeah. So you still have time to run out and get your Christmas candy and bake your Christmas cookies and stuff like that, or buy the presents for the kids. Although you don't really have that tradition here in Taiwan, but in any case, it's a good time of the year to put on that Santa Claus hat and have fun with your friends and relatives. So let's find out about the origin. Of the candy cane. Let's listen now to our entire lesson read from top to bottom. Every Christmas, kids all over the U.S. take pleasure in consuming the sweet, sticky peppermint-flavored candy known as the candy cane. The candy cane is the U.S.'s best-selling candy every December, making it an icon of the festive period. This kid's favorite has been around for generations now, but just where do its origins lie? The candy cane began life in the 1670s in a part of what is now Germany. Similar candies were popular across Europe at the time. They were just hard, straight sticks made of sugar. Supposedly, a German choir master gave these candies to his choir boys during services. To stop them from misbehaving, however, the church protested that candy wasn't appropriate, given that church was meant to be a solemn place. Rather than giving up, the choir master bent the candy sticks to make them resemble shepherds' crooks, as Jesus is often compared to a shepherd who cares for his followers. This way, they take on a religious meaning to satisfy the church. The hook also makes the candy convenient to hang on Christmas trees. This phenomenon was first documented in 1847, when a German-Swiss immigrant to the U.S. decorated a tree with them. Until the turn of the 20th century, candy canes were only available in white and without flavorings. However, after this point, more flavors started to become available. Peppermint candy canes with red stripes soon became the most popular choice. In the 1950s, a machine was developed in the U.S. to mass produce the candy. This allowed them to be distributed for consumption all over the world. According to some, the candy cane's appearance has religious interpretations. In addition to its shape, the red stripe represents the blood of Christ. While the white stripe is for his purity, the candy solid structure is the solid foundation of the church. Whether or not you follow Christianity, candy canes are a nice treat at Christmas time. Okay, let's get to it. Let's discuss the contents of today's lesson. It's our history unit, and we're talking about the history of candy canes.、Mm-hmm. Uh, we could also talk about various aspects of Christmas, like、uh, the origin of Santa Claus and the reindeer and stuff like that. But、uh, we're going to be focusing today 
on the humble candy cane, which is quite common during the Christmas season.、Mm -hmm. So, how did the Christmas candy come to be? Well, we're going to tell you. I guess this phrase、uh, should be mentioned. To come to be、uh, just means how did it start to exist? Where、mm -hmm. did it come from? Now, every Christmas, kids all over the U.S. take pleasure in consuming the sweet, sticky peppermint flavored candy known as the candy cane. I would say not just in the U.S. but perhaps in other countries as well. Although it may be more common in the U.S., but kids just love consuming this sweet, sticky peppermint flavored candy, which we call the candy cane. So yes, oftentimes it is sweet and it is sticky. After you lick it a few times, it becomes sticky, and also the the flavor of them is usually peppermint.、Uh, mint, of course, is an herb、uh, that grows all over the world, and there are different. Kinds. The only two kind I know of are peppermint and spearmint.、Mm. Uh, spearmint to me tastes like that gum、mm -hmm. produced by the Wrigley Chewing Gum Company,、mm -hmm. and so I don't really like spearmint so much. It reminds me of the gum too much, but.、Uh, No, which isn't to say the gum is bad. It just you know tea tasting like gum is、mm -hmm. weird. But in any case, peppermint is the other kind of mint, and that's more common in candy and things like that. So it's kind of cool tasting, and of course, it's the flavor of the candy cane. Yeah, I actually love peppermint flavored candy. That is. I like peppermint flavored mints, mint chocolate. That's、uh, got that peppermint flavor. So the candy cane is the U.S.'s best-selling candy every December. I yeah, I, I buy a lot of candy canes if I'm in the U.S. We put them on our trees. They're easy to even put on gifts. You know, you just tie it on a bow, and、uh, it makes a little extra.、Uh, I don't know decoration. But、uh, and I do enjoy eating them. They're just straight sugar, though. There's nothing、yeah. very、um, appealing about it. Other than that, it's just sweet. So it's the U.S.'s best-selling candy, making it an icon or a symbol of the festive period. Festive just means、um, when things are decorated up for a special holiday or season or time of the year.、Um, we have a very festive Taiwan during Chinese New Year. There are a lot of Red decorations put up. It's kind of a fun time to be here in Taiwan during Chinese New Year. Well, Christmas is the same in the U.S. There, are, you know, lights on the the homes outside and Christmas trees. It's very festive, very decorated, and it makes you feel like celebrating. Yep, lots of decorations, lots of lights, and it seems that the official colors for Christmas are red and green. Yeah,、uh, candy canes tend to be red and white,、mm -hmm. but I've seen red, green, and white candy canes as、too. well.、Yeah. And of course, a lot of Christmas candy is just colored red, white, and green、mm -hmm. in various forms. But we do have this question:、uh, just where do its origins lie? In other words, where did the candy cane come from? Who invented it? And And why is it so common? Well, let's find out in the next paragraph. Here it says the candy cane began life in the 1670s in a part of what is now Germany. Now Germany has a long history, and in the past Germany was divided up into these smaller kingdoms and fiefdoms、mm -hmm. and things like that. So、uh, the name of Germany changed all the time, and I don't even know、uh, what the difference between Prussia and Germany and the Hessians. I don't know what that's all about. So Germany. It's kind of complicated, but、uh, basically, the candy cane began life in the 1670s in what is now Germany. It's now Germany, but back then it was something else. That's right. So similar candies were popular across Europe at that time, and back then they were just hard, straight sticks made of sugar. They didn't have that little bend. Um, at the you know at the very top of it, it didn't look like a cane at all. It just looked like, you know, a straight hard stick,、um, kind of like a sugar cane looks. You know, you grow sugar cane and it's just a straight stick. And then, I see kids who like to just suck on the the sugar cane. I don't like that very much. I'm not a big sugar fan. I like other things to be added, like butter and vanilla. Anyway, they were just、uh, pretty simple then, supposedly. It says a German choir master gave these candies to his choir boys during services to stop them from misbehaving. Now, back back then,、um, this is you know 300 years ago or more, the the people in choir were these little boys, 
and they sounded like little sopranos because、uh, the choir boys were young, so their voices sounded like little kids, and、um, they could sing the girl parts because little girls weren't in the choir; they just had choir boys. But boys are boys; they've been the same、um, forever, and they like to get into trouble, of course. And during church, you're supposed to be quiet and reverent, and、uh, they weren't. So their choir master, the person who conducted the choir, is the choir master. He gave these candies to the boys to keep them from、uh, misbehaving, acting out. He thought, well, maybe if they're busy eating, they won't misbehave. Supposedly, here is one of our vocabulary words. So, supposedly, we'll say this sometimes to say, well, what、um, is claimed to be true, or what we assume, or what we imagine to be the case. Sometimes it is true. Sometimes it's not.、Um, you can also use supposedly to talk about what's、um, believed. But again, you don't have. Positive knowledge. You don't have the facts for sure. So supposedly, this is what we hear. We're not sure, but this is what we hear. He gave the candy to the boys. Did it work?、Hmm, I don't know. It's a good technique. There,、uh, you all have to remember a day in the past when there were no smartphones,、mm. and you had to get kids to behave in a different way or use a different way to get them to behave. Nowadays, oh, just go play on your cell on your smartphone. No problem. The kids will sit there and play video games for hours. But back in the day, kids could be naughty and they could make noise <laughs> and they'd throw spit wads at each other and paper airplanes and、uh, try to put little messages on the backs of their shirts saying "kick." Me and stuff like、right. that. They <laughs> were naughty, and even if they were in church, they were naughty as well. So supposedly, a choir master gave them candies to make them behave.、Mm-hmm. And we'll continue talking about the origin of the candy cane in just a couple of seconds. But right now, we're going to take a break and listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. 我是派老师。今天讲解的是十二月十九号 Unit Nine. How the Christmas candy cane came to be. 这是一份篇章结构的练习题，内容关于 candy cane 拐杖糖。圣诞节就快到了，提到这个节庆，大家就想到圣诞树。不过还有一项应景的食物就是 candy cane， 大家可能吃过，但或许做了这篇题目才了解到糖果的由来。好，我们一起来解题吧。在开始解题前，老师想再次跟大家强调，在你答题之前。请先看一下四个选项，那在心中有一个约略的印象，哪些句子呢可以让文章变得更完整？甚至于啊，同学可以大致上把这四个选项排序。有时候呢，有些选项的句子本身是有线索的，让我们知道它大概会在文章的前中后哪一个部分。此外，篇章结构最重要的就是你回填句子的时候，要记住看看这能不能够让前后文连贯起来。那请大家要记得“前后连贯，文意通顺”这八字真言。好，我们一起看第一题。前文提到，每年圣诞节，美国各地的孩子都开心吃着既甜又黏、还带有薄荷味、被称之为“拐杖糖”的糖果。拐杖糖是美国每年十二月最热销的糖果，这也成为呢节日期间的象征。好，我们再看后一句，是第二段开头。The candy cane began life in the 1670s. 1670s in the part of what is now Germany. 最早从一六七零年代，在现今德国境内开始出现。根据前后两句再加上文章的结构，这个空格是第一段最后一句，通常是通篇文章的主旨所在，也就是核心大意。那么，它应该要跟读者说明拐杖糖的起源。所以，第一题我们选 C。This kid's favorite has been around for generations now, but just where do? Its origins lie. 这项孩子的最爱已经存在了好几世代，不过它的起源究竟在哪里呢 ？We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Okay, welcome back, everybody. Let's continue talking about the origins of the Christmas candy cane. Now, you might be curious there. Why do we say origins? Why is that plural? Well, because there are lots of theories, and it may come from more than one place. So、yeah. we tend to,、uh, well, we tend to use both these terms. What's the origin of something, or what are the origins of something?、Uh, we use those terms interchangeably. We do, yeah. So this is where we left off. Supposedly, a German choir master gave the Candies to the choir boys because they were being naughty, and he just wanted to shut them up. And we're supposed to be reverent in a church.、Right. You're supposed to show respect to God and Jesus. You can't be screwing around there. However, the church protested that candy wasn't appropriate, given that church was meant to be a solemn place. So members of the church, other priests and bishops or whatever. Uh, they protested, or you could say protested.、Uh, I think the American、uh, pronunciation of the verb is protested, whereas in England they'll say protest as the verb form. But the church protested that candy was not appropriate. You can't have candy <laughs> in a church. Okay, you can have it at home,、uh, but not in church. And church is supposed to, you know, eat the flesh of Jesus with the bread and drink his blood in the form of wine or That's grape. That's the sacrament.、Yeah. The sacrament, indeed. So yeah, you can't have. Candy in a church—it's disrespectful to the Lord. It's supposed to be a solemn place, and if something's solemn, it's quiet. Maybe kind of a little sad, but it's very serious. It's dignified. It's formal,、mm -hmm. and you're not supposed to screw around. You need to take it seriously. Well, candy is awfully sticky too. So if you're a kid and you're eating candy, you'll take those sticky fingers and get, you know, the the hymn books dirty, and you get your, your sticky fingers are touching different things. It's kind of a mess. So that's one reason not to give candy to kids during church. But they protested or they demonstrated and said, "Oh, this isn't right. We object to this." And、uh, given that the church was meant to be a solemn or serious place, rather than so instead of giving up, or rather than giving up, the choir master he just changed the shape of the candy sticks. So he bent the candy sticks to make them resemble shepherd's crooks. So shepherd's crooks are those long,、uh, long, tall wooden.、Um, I don't know、poles. what would you call poles, yeah, that a shepherd would use, and he would、um, lead his sheep to wherever that he needed them to go into a different pasture or meadow where they could eat. So if you resemble something, you look like it.、Um, maybe you've been told that you resemble your father or your mother, or maybe a great aunt. You look like them. So these bent candy sticks then kind of look like a shepherd's crook. That's what they're called, a crook. And Jesus is often compared to being a shepherd, and and the Christians who follow him are said to be his sheep. So we're the followers; the sheep are his followers. And so suddenly, it kind of had this sort of religious flavor to it, rather than just being a hard stick of candy. Exactly. So maybe the bishops and the priests were satisfied with that. Well, okay, it's a religious symbol. I guess the candy is okay <laughs> if it does look like the shepherds. Crook, which again is that big cane object,、mm -hmm. and we only use this word "crook" here as a noun form、uh, when we talk about that object that shepherds use. Yeah, you don't hear it very often. Yeah, you'll probably see it in illustrations if you go past a church. Maybe they'll show a shepherd tending to his flock of sheep, or Jesus doing the same thing. And this way, they take on a religious meaning to satisfy the church. So the choir master said, "Hey, you know, now they look like a shepherd's crook. Maybe that will make the choir boys." Uh, remember that hey, we're in this church to revere God and Jesus. So it will take on, or it will assume, or it will have a religious meaning, and then the ch church would be satisfied, and they'd say, okay, well, go ahead and give those candy canes to the choir boys when they're being naughty. I want to mention here. I don't typically hear、uh, this pole described as a shepherd's crook. It's usually described as the shepherd's staff. S T.、Mm. Aff, just in case okay,、uh, you、good. maybe had never heard of that, I hadn't either. So yeah, so they're trying to compare it to that, and this way they'd take on a religious meaning. Meaning, if you take something on, you assume it.、Uh, maybe you are 
being cast in a play. So you take on the personality of the character that you're playing in a play, or maybe you're an actor in a movie. You take on certain、uh, attributes that they have. So you you start、um, uh, appearing to be that way. So it took on a religious meaning. And the hook also makes the candy convenient to hang on Christmas trees. Don't forget that part. This phenomenon was first documented. We see records of it appearing in 1847 when a German Swiss immigrant to the U.S. decorated his tree with them, which is kind of fun. That's where we first see this idea of candy canes being put on a Christmas tree. And a German Swiss person is a person, I believe, from the German-speaking area of Switzerland.、Mm -hmm. And he got sick of looking at the beautiful, beautiful scenery in Switzerland. <laughs> he wanted to go to America with all those nasty factories and stuff like that. <laughs> so he immigrated to the U.S. He moved from one country to another. To immigrate、mm -hmm. is the verb, and the person is an immigrant. There are lots of.、Uh, European immigrants in the United States, for example, and he hung it from a branch in his Christmas tree,、yeah. and I guess the idea spread from there. Now, until the turn of the 20th century, candy canes were only available in white and without flavorings.、Hmm. Well, that sounds pretty boring.、Uh, back then, they were made out of sugar, so they were very sweet, but they didn't have any flavor.、Yeah. However, after this point, more flavors started to become available.、Mm -hmm. So, yes, when you turn candy, or excuse me. When you turn sugar into candy, it's a very easy to add flavorings to it.、Uh, you can make it taste like orange or grape or pineapple or whatever. And I think they probably tried all these different flavors, but. Peppermint candy canes with red stripes soon became the most popular choice. So you need to make them taste good, and you do need to make them look pretty cool too. They added the red stripe because I guess an all-white candy cane is kind of boring. Yeah, I wouldn't be eating it if if it didn't have that peppermint flavor. So yeah, they had these red stripes, and they became a really popular choice in the 1950s. A machine was developed in the U.S. to mass produce the candy. If you mass produce something, you produce it in large numbers. So they probably came up with a machine that they could use in a factory. That's where candies usually produced, and they were able to mass produce the candy. We're able to mass produce a lot of things these days because of、uh, machines that people, like engineers, develop, which is awesome. So this allowed them to be distributed for consumption all over the world. They then became pretty popular because people could see what they, you know, look like, and they thought they were kind of cool. So moving on to the final paragraph, according to some. The candy cane's appearance has religious interpretations. Now, I'm very religious. I'm a Christian, but I don't think the candy cane has religious、uh, meaning to me, at least. But some people believe that,、uh, in addition to its shape, which looks like the shepherd's staff or crook, as we mentioned earlier,、uh, the red stripe represents the blood of Christ, while the white stripe is for、uh, Jesus's purity. Purity is a word we use when something's really、uh, without any flaws. It's、uh, it's quite wonderful and beautiful. So purity has that、uh, feeling, gives that feeling that someone's very a very good person, very moral,、um, does what is right all the time, isn't out、uh, drinking and carousing. So purity would represent、um, Christ because he is supposedly without sin. That's what Christians believe. Now, the candy solid structure. What does that refer to, Tom?、Uh, well, okay, we're talking about symbolism of、yeah. the candy cane. So again, we've got the white stripe and the red stripe, meaning things that are Christian in nature, and the candy solid structure. The fact that it's hard candy as opposed to soft candy is the solid foundation of the church. So, a foundation just means something has been set up. You have a base. Uh, that、uh, holds something steady after it's built onto like a house.、Uh, exactly, a you need to have a foundation of a house, and、uh, of course, you need a foundation for your company, like、uh, you know, investments and things like that. And so, yes, indeed, they assume that、uh, the solid structure of the candy cane. Uh, tells you that the church is the foundation of the world and of society, so you better believe, or you're going to suffer. Now, whether or not you follow Christianity, candy canes are a nice treat at Christmas time.
So I've never thought of the re- religious connotations of yeah, the candy cane before. And even though I'm not religious myself, I'm not going to stop eating them as a result of that. They're still very tasty, and I think most people probably don't think too much about the religious meaning of candy canes. Do you do you eat candy canes? Uh, well, have I? I don't. Know, I don't <laughs> think I've had one for many years. But I do know that it is quite fun to kind of suck to on suck them, on, yeah. and then I like uh, kind of rolling my tongue around them and sticking it through the uh, round part there. And, <laughs> Feeling that sensation, so、yeah. yeah, sometimes it is fun to eat candy canes, but I wouldn't have them as part of a regular nutritious diet. <laughs> okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion for today. Let's turn things over now to our Chinese teacher. 接着，请看第二题。前文提到，德国唱诗班指挥在礼拜仪式期间，给自己唱诗班的男孩这种糖，那希望呢，小孩子乖乖的。后面一句就讲到说，指挥其实没有放弃，而是把糖果棍折弯，让它看起来就像牧羊人的曲柄手杖。这是因为哦，耶稣经常呢，呃，被比喻成一位关心追随者的牧羊人。那从第二句来看，用逻辑推论，指挥应该是受到了一些阻力，有人反对他给小孩吃糖。后面才会说他并未因此放弃，所以第二题选 A。However， the church protested 这部这个部分，它意思就是说教会反对，他们认为有鉴于教会应当是庄严的场所，给小孩吃糖是不恰当的。那后来呢，教会因为宗教意涵而接受了这个糖果。到了一八四七年，又在因为到了美国的移民，他们用拐杖糖装饰圣诞树，所以拐杖糖就此传入美国。紧接着，请看第三题。前一句提到，直到西元二十世纪初，拐杖糖只有白色，而且没有添加调味剂。后一句，带有红色条纹的薄荷口味拐杖糖，很快就成为最受欢迎的选择。前后两句都在探讨拐杖糖的外观还有口味，考量前后文连贯，因此第三题选 D。However， 这个部分它的意思是，然而在此之后，更多口味开始出现了。五零年代之后，机器制作有助于糖果大量生产，因此推波助澜，让拐杖糖传遍了全世界。好，紧接着，请看第四题，请看后一句。除了形状，糖果的红色条纹还代表耶稣的圣血，而白色条纹则代表纯洁。后面又接续说明，糖果坚实的结构是基督教啊教会里面哦，这也是一个象征的意思，象征的就是教会的厚实根基。由此可知。最后这一段是在详细说明拐杖糖所具备的宗教意涵，而第一句是主题句，是全文全段的大意。因此，第四题选 B。According to some, the candy cane's appearance has religious interpretations. 意思是说，根据一些说法，拐杖糖的外观其实是含有宗教意义的。好。以上呢，就是我们这篇篇章结构老师用中文所做的讲解。那希望同学在听完讲解之后，能够掌握解题的要领，在考试的时候呢，非常的顺利。好，以上就是我们所做的解题，谢谢大家。That's it for today, everybody. But we're going to talk some more about Christmas as we get closer and closer to this festive holiday. So make sure you tune in and learn plenty of English with us from all of us here at English Digest. My name is Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.